Hello everyone, you are welcome to today's episode. My name is Flourish Ubayi and today I have the special privilege of hosting one of the most inspiring young women of our time. Her name is Morenike Mulei. She's a mother, she's a businesswoman, she's a pastor's wife and she's just all around amazing. I cannot wait for you to sit down with us as we have this conversation. Now don't forget to leave your comments below if you have any questions questions let us know what your questions are also subscribe to this channel like this video and share with your friends your families your loved ones because this is going to be life-changing all right let's get into the conversation Hi, Morenike. thank you so much for joining us thanks so much Flourish, for having me yeah um okay so i want to start by asking mm -hmm. how did you find god like what how did your relationship with god start i think that <laughs> this question is so so funny because I think that I share so many, I share this experience with a lot of people. I think I'm one of those people that gave my life to Christ like one and ten times, um, you know, at different intervals. You know, once you, you know, commit a sin, you feel like, you know, you've already gone out of salvation and then you have to give your life to Christ all over again. That was like my own journey. But um, I would say that to answer this question, because growing up in a Christian home, you know, my parents were pastors. In fact, they were pastors before I was born. So I feel like, you know, I, I could not escape it, right? Um, but I'll say personally, when I found God myself will be um, at the age of 10. And this was the time where I can consciously remember the encounter, right? I was just alone and I, for some reason, you know, I just felt, you know, this peace. I just felt this presence. And all of a sudden, I just went on the floor and I was praying and I was crying and I was singing. And I remember vividly that, you know, once I finished, once the encounter was over, I then put on the TV. And then it was Pastor Matthew Ashimolawa that was preaching at the time. And after he was done with the preaching, he then, you know, um, he then asked for, you know, for those that wanted to give their life to Christ to indicate. And through the TV, you know, I did the deal, you know, put up your hand, you know, and all of that. So I'll say that that was the time that I truly, truly um, found Christ. So from that point mm -hmm. you know, now, obviously, I'm sure you, you must have developed your relationship with mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. How are you able to integrate that relationship with God where, you know, it's just you loving on God and everything, and then now you have work, you mm -hmm. have family, you have all of that. Mm -hmm. How do you bring God into the rest of your life to where it's not just your spiritual life is not separate from the rest? <laughs> so for me i don't think that my spiritual life is separate from other areas of my life my life i'm spiritual right so it's every other thing that has to fall into my spiritual life so that's how i see everything so everything even up to you know how i'm going to look in a day um you know what i'm going to say everything like is just connected i feel i feel like if you're in my thoughts 24 hours of the day, well, except for when I'm sleeping, right? I feel like I'm always, you know, in that com com um, constant communication with God, right? Is that I'm praying or I'm just thinking, okay, what would God have me do at this point? Or just even just, you know how it is when you're, you're married, right? Yeah. Um, it's just so, you know, communication, communication with your husband. Uh, imagine you just saying that, oh, separating my married life from you know my husband you know it's almost impossible so for me that's how um i so i integrate every area of my life like in terms of like my my marriage my you know as a as a mom as a business owner as a friend as a daughter everything you know even into my finances as well right um we have like for example if i want to make a financial um, decision it has like even though it's making sense on paper right i need to have like that confirmation from god that i have to because it might look okay to everyone else but you just never know because nobody knows the future it might be tomorrow that the thing will just drop and then i'll make losses you know so things like that so i don't know how people do it when they don't have god like I, it's not even like oh i'm trying to sound all spiritual and everything but really like i sit down sometimes i'm just like ah, how do people even do it like how can you navigate life without you know um the advantage of the Holy Spirit and obviously like you know that relationship with God so for me it's a it's it's a no-brainer like it's non-negotiable it's it's everything and I'm so grateful to God and I actually you know try to live my life um, for people to be inspired and see that say look you can actually do you can actually have it all 
um, and having it all is based on the fact that you know um, I have this beautiful relationship with God and there's sometimes that there's some decision that I want to make right which might be the difference between myself and another person and just that um, nudging that says do not make that step or do not take that step might be the difference right uh, and might make my journey a bit shorter right so these are some of the many many things right that I've enjoyed um, as a daughter of God basically mm. I like the fact that you said nudging and that mm. instance that you gave because sometimes people think that when it comes to like spirituality mm. and work mm. and business mm. like you know how you hear stories of people that maybe before they release a song they mm. have to go to the mountain <laughs> to pray yeah. God will give them the song mm. and all that but I want you to speak more about having that constant um, communication to where you don't necessarily need to stop everything you are doing mm. but you can just, you know, speak with God mm -hmm. one on one, mm -hmm. like in the moment. Mm -hmm. You understand know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. can you just speak more about that? Like, more practically, mm -hmm. how can somebody who is a believer mm -hmm. engage with God throughout the day, like with things that don't necessarily have anything to do with, like, with issues of life mm -hmm. generally? So, um, I hope I'm able to answer this question, but before I even go into that, there's something that I believe in, which is the inter interruptive love of God right so I believe strongly that if I am supposed to go right and I've turned right and God wants me to turn left even though he has been saying turn right sorry turn left and I do not hear once I turn as I'm turning that right God will interrupt me I always I legit have that um, belief right so sometimes even though you know I've asked God to please you know um, because God is always talking sometimes when we're either too busy to hear or we're not we're not really um on the you know we, we just can't hear or we're not even hearing at the time maybe there are lots of distractions at the time but i always just tell god i say look god you already know now i'm your daughter there's no need for us to be doing complicated things once i'm already going in the wrong direction just find a way and god is so powerful so merciful right that he would definitely interrupt you because he's imagine you i mean you have a son right you've been telling your child don't put your hand in that fire don't put your hand in that fire don't put your he can hear you or maybe he's not even here or let me say he's even hearing you but you just decide that i want to you, i know that your mind will not allow you as he wants to put his hand you would immediately interrupt that right so that's what i believe and it always works for me right and so everyone has like different relationships um so for me that's my own relationship with god and like i said earlier everything that i do is is already like so i'm already used to it um, and I feel like the more you do it, the more you get better at it, the more it comes natural, the more it comes easier. You know, there's someone that was saying that um, you, you've not been hearing, you've not been able to hear the um, voice of God and you don't want to get married, you want to choose a life partner. That's when you're not praying that God, please open my You've not trained yourself. You know, you don't understand the relationship. You don't know how God speaks with speak, speaks with you. You now want to start hearing God when it when it now has to do with something as um, as um, important as you know choosing a life partner. So it's as simple as oh God, okay. I know some people might say well, this might be too too much, but then it must be as simple as oh God, you know what would you have me eat this morning or what would you have me wear this morning, right? Just little little things like that, and you'll be shocked that. You know, the Holy Spirit says, wear white and black. And then you're going to, off to the office. And then your boss at work is also wearing white and black. And then that's like a conversation started that morning, right? And it's just like, oh my goodness, like, wow. You know, so little, little things like that that you would have. Um, and then there will be days where you, you actually miss it, right? Do not beat yourself up. Um, again, God is a loving father, right? So, um, those little, little mistakes, because I've, I've noticed, and this one thing that the devil used to use with me, against me before, is that I would either make a mistake or I would commit a sin, and instead of me to just ask for God for forgiveness and just move, I will not begin to dwell in the guilt, dealing the sin. I'm just like, you know what, I've already sinned. You know what, let me just. I'm a bad child. <laughs> Let me just go wayward from here. Yeah. And no, we're not wayward in the sense, but you know, I then begin to, you know, lose prayer time, mm -hmm. you know, that communication with God. And then I feel like I now start getting I start sinking deeper in the sin. And that's what the devil wants, right? And then it was just one day I was driving home from work and my daughter I was driving and my two daughters were in the back. The last the second one did something. 
and immediately obviously i scolded her i beat be her and then she was crying right and maybe like 10 minutes later she was already hugging me from the back mommy i love you i love you you know like someone she's already forgotten we had like that um, um encounter where i had even beat her and immediately like you just, you just, you just told me so look you would commit a sin or you would do something and your father still loves you he would correct you correct you with love it doesn't mean that you now start running back and so that um really taught me a very big lesson so once i yes i don't wake up in one and say oh yes i'm going to commit a sin but then when i when it happens right immediately i ask god for forgiveness and because i have an understanding i mean because i have like a beautiful relationship with my earthly parents and i you know that helps me to know that when i when i just say oh, mom dad i'm so sorry they're like okay 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 no problem like next time you know i believe that you will not do that anymore so that also helps and immediately that also helps and then immediately you know i'm able to retrace my step and then i continue the the relationship i think that the enemy is very skilled in using mm-hmm, that mm-hmm, mm-hmm. part mm-hmm. you know condemnation yes, against us. Yes, yes but for me what really helps is just this mindset of the whole point is the devil wants you to run away from God. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But instead of running to God, mm-hmm. I'll just be like, God, <laughs> I don't have anywhere to go. It's only you. And so like yeah. I'm running towards yeah. God instead running, of running, running away running, from God. Running because to. that's the whole point. Yeah, the whole he wants point. to like the enemy wants to um affect your mm-hmm. he wants your um that relationship yeah, to be yeah, broken, that yeah, connection yeah. so that yeah. you yeah. won't, you know, just the whole flow is just yes. like, because if you look, if you look at it as well you know how you know god will live in 99 and then chase that one mm-hmm. that one went astray yeah. it's not like it just went it purposely went but god will still live that 99 which you know seems like uh, we, the other 99 that are that have been good you know being um, why are you leaving them and then chasing this mm-hmm. one that and also you know also to, the prodigal yeah, son as well right. Jesus. so if you look at it really you realize that is really the 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 device of the enemy, right? When we think that once you do something bad, God already condemns you, right? Is that's the and trick of the lie. enemy? It's a big lie. It's, just, it's a very big lie because yeah. we really study Bible and then you know look at these things. You realize that no, like God loves us, and in fact, He uses He uses anyone and everybody. In fact, most times you will see once you you know the first first in the Bible, different people that God has used for big and mighty mm-hmm. things right so yeah. that's another thing that really helps me because i'm just like okay yes <laughs> i messed up but you know what god specializes in using as in, people that are not as in, worthy and not like the best exactly, or perfect exactly, so exactly. yeah that's really encouraging mm-hmm. so but you know you have a family mm-hmm. you have a business mm-hmm. you have all this so many things mm-hmm. going on mm-hmm. How are you able to still keep your relationship with God going? Mm-hmm. I remember when we were in school, like, for mm-hmm. me, we had time. Don't tell me about break, it. You know, <laughs> you, you Don't hours, tell me about it. You spend time with God and everything. Mm-hmm. But now, you mm-hmm. have all these things that are mm-hmm. important, yeah. that, are also, that also demand your attention. Yeah, yeah. So how can someone still maintain that daily connection with God, even in spite of everything going on? You know, some people, they have to leave for work. Like five a.m. If I can go four a.m. Four a.m. Mm-hmm. and all that. So yeah. how can you really maintain that? So first off, right, I would say that to everyone, regardless of the season that you are in or you are at, enjoy it and make the best use of it. Because sometimes I'm sure even when we were in school, we thought we did not have time. That oh, we had to go for lectures. We had to you know go for especially for people that like us that went to governance. There were always activities, like chapel service, you know, that meeting here and there. So so but but then you leave school and then you realize that ah three years ago was actually <laughs> i had a lot of time yeah. so every time you know, because we're always striving to do something or be something so i would say that every see look every season that you're in enjoy it and going back to what i said earlier about having to organize yourself in terms of communicating finding ways to communicate with god throughout the day mm-hmm. so for me i would say that if I had maybe, you know, 10 years ago when I was in school. Um, actually, I think it was like 13 years. But, mm, <laughs> it, is, <laughs> it is well, if I had, say, eight hours free time, right? And, you know, I would probably take an hour or two, um, you know, to study my Bible, pray and all of that. 
and then now if i had maybe just six hours free time it just means that i have to be creative about it i don't know the day if there is a will there'll always be a way right um and i feel like you know it depends on what is important to you i mean back then i don't think i used to wake up by 4 a.m right so now if i have to now i actually have to wake up by 4 a.m my devotion is between 4 and 6. i get to the gym by six i would actually leave by 5 45 so I, i'm continuing my my devotion but i'm just rounding off so by 5 45 i leave the house six o'clock go to the gym from six to seven i do my gym and then i come back home get prepared i leave the house by around eight and then my my day starts from there and then i try to round off like around five and then i come back home you know i spend more time with the family and all that so for me yes as i'm saying you now it seems easy there are days where it's off like yeah. i have i i some days i cannot make the gym but then that's fine because I probably, if i did not make it in the morning i can substitute for an evening um but then for me my devotion is standard like four to six and i know that this was like for me to get here it was a bit hard but maybe now that my children don't they are not they don't need me as much as they used to i mean i'm not breastfeeding anymore you know i don't have to be chasing a child mm -hmm. and then because of growth um i've also learned the art of delegation mm -hmm. so while i'm away at the gym you know the nanny is preparing them for school so i don't have to be the one to prepare them for school make their lunch pack and all that you know i just ensure that what's needed is done and then it is done right and then they leave for school and then everybody's fine so we've been able to you know walk into a routine so i would say that you know routine is like really important first of all understanding what is important to you what are the in fact see look we don't have 24, 24 hours is not enough for anybody mm -hmm. but guess what you know if you're able to maximize the 24 hours you would get the best of, out of it m m people ask me how do you you know have time for all the things that you do and honestly, I feel like I even have so much free time on my hands, honest, like to even be honest with you. And that's because um, right now, obviously, I cannot compare now with, say, I started my business nine years ago. And then I got married about 10 years and nine months now. I think it's June, July, August. Well, I don't know when this will be airing, but let's just say like uh, almost 11 years, right? And I obviously cannot compare now with 11 years ago when I was just starting out my business having a child i mean it was it wasn't funny right i do not i didn't have time for myself there were days where i would leave the house and i'll be wearing two left legs of back to me you see how i'm slaying like this now <laughs> that was not my story back then right but then like i said seasons and just knowing that you look this too shall pass whatever it is that you're going through now but just ensuring that you have like your top three non-negotiable goal so for me my relationship with god so my devotion no matter i shall know that i will not use 24 hours to do other things there must be time that i would find if it's to cut down my sleep hours just to have that relationship with god and have like my and again the relationship not that oh it has to be structured oh it has to be four to six but i found out that you know for me i would have that time and then throughout the course of the day you know is that i'm listening to a podcast so i'm just very still for like five ten minutes and just you know um connecting with god and you know inspirations come in oh you might just be so for me my relationship with god is actually very i would say in simple terms right it's not like oh i'm just worshiping you know, or having that relationship with him because i want something it's not my atm that when i, I just mm -hmm. go there because yeah. i need to pull out money and then i leave right so most times in fact 99 percent of the time right i hardly ask for anything for myself mm -hmm. and i realized that god takes care of my needs mm -hmm. financially emotionally you know everything right mm -hmm. so instead of that like do you ask me so what do you now discuss with god right these other things so be like god what is on what what is what is the burden on your heart right now right like i know that you know you're looking at the world right now and it's almost like you should clear all of us <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure the world is now even worse than how it was in sodom and gomorrah right and so i just feel like you know this is one of the things like okay how like god like you know just 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 talk to me you know just you know just just saying and you know also praying for people that i need people that you know yeah basically people in, in fact sometimes i might be driving past and i see somebody you know, maybe under the bridge 
um, or I just see somebody okay and then that moment like I'm inspired to pray for them that God will okay if I cannot even give them if I cannot stop maybe I, I couldn't stop by or if I could tell the driver stop by to maybe give them maybe 100 naira 1000 or something I just pray that God please let somebody help them today you know like let them be safe let them feel safe let them feel loved you know like those kind of things right um so that's that's how I answer that question. I like, I like what you said about seasons because, like, for me too, mm. I, as a mom, like, I'm just coming out of that season mm. of. Are you sure you've come out of that? But, yeah, so I, I don't do it. Well, I'm like mm. 80% mm. out because mm. I just stopped. Okay, maybe this is TMI. But I just stopped. I get you. And, you know, at least that re- reduces mm, the burden mm, a lot. Mm, and having to travel and pump while mm, I'm traveling, mm, you know, make sure everything is going fine, yeah. going on well at mm, home and everything. Mm. And now I feel like I've finally come into that season mm. where I found a routine. Mm. And I, I, I like what you said because it's also good to be patient with yourself. Yes. Because mm-hmm. it's not going to happen automatically. Of course. There will be times when it's going to look like everything is going crazy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But just being patient until yeah. you find that mm-hmm. reason. Mm-hmm. Exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. Okay. Mm-hmm. So um, I know that you have a group of amazing friends. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I'm not a stalker, but I know. <laughs> no worries, it's okay, it's fine. And I'm sure they get it a lot yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So how did that happen? Mm-hmm. Because you guys are all doing like amazing things and it's really really inspiring Mm -hmm. for the younger generation like how do you find covenant friends Mm -hmm. that are in line with the same like that have the same mindset Mm -hmm. same purpose and going in the same direction serving god Mm -hmm. slaying Mm -hmm. at the same time Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. interesting i feel like for every time i ask this question if i'm giving and then I, I'll be a billionaire yeah. by now. <laughs> but I, I understand that, you know, it's such, you know, an amazing um, question for, you know, the times that we are in now where people are like, ah, don't trust anybody or just be on your own. Or again, I don't know how people do it, living life solo, right? It's not, it can't even work, right? We, are, we have been created to have, like, human connection, right? So, and that's why, you know, when God created adam he then said it that it is not good for man to be alone right so there's no way that you know it's just in our dna we would always um whether we like it or not whether we try to form oh i don't need anybody we actually do so for my friends okay so i will just walk us back a bit and i would say that um so if you look at it like while growing up right and i i, I you always give this example while growing up i feel like the friends that we got we really had no choice and i'll I'll explain so primary school right i don't think we had a choice of the primary school that we attended our parents saw a school that they liked or you know they had done their all their homework and then they put us in that school naturally you will get friends from your school like your classmates your seat mates you know and that's where you get your friends from you didn't have to you didn't do anything you know any work in, in court right you get secondary school as well most often than not your friends are from that secondary school very very you know um unlikely that you will get friends from other secondary schools like how do you want to a- access them same thing with university as well and then maybe church right those are the ways that we you know know people and then have people as friends but i would always say that once you now get out of university and then you're now living like you're now responsible for yourself i would say that you then have the 100 percent responsibility of um, knowing who you want to be in your um, circle or who you want to be as friends i mean my friends that i might we're very close right? i call them my we call ourselves core we didn't attend the same school we didn't attend any of any school wow. at the same church nothing right so we how did you meet each other interesting so um, one of us, um, Bumi George, um, she had re- relocated to Nigeria and she just got him married and God told her to form like a sisterhood, right? And, you know, just young women that were, you know, purpose driven, were Christians, young wives. You know, I think at the time, the I, if I was the one that had been married, the 
longest and i think it was about maybe four years even though that person had been married under four years so maybe some people six months if i we had one person that was getting married a week as we were forming that circle right so we're just really young because we understand and i'm so grateful for that group because i i can't imagine doing life without them we're about 16 but obviously like in a group like that you would know that there will be smaller the smaller groups, groups yeah. exactly um so we're 16 and what happened was Bumi had spoken to Funto Boy. I don't know if you know Funto yeah. Boy exactly. And at the time, Funto and I went to the same secondary school and university, but we're not in the same set. So, but I know that during that period, right, I had gotten a prophecy for her, you know, from God, and then I was sharing with her. And I think at the same time, Bumi too was talking to her to please invite one or two like minded people like her. And so, obviously, like my 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 name dropped in her spirit and then she said oh Renny, you know what there's this group you know do you want to join and i said no problem what's the arm in joining right and then i joined and i would say that you know and so i so i was just neutral with everyone so i also brought in like a friend um and then maybe two or three other people brought in like their own friends and that's how we like formed that particular um group um, but then going forward, you know, then having to understand people, you know, you would obviously draw towards some people more than others, even though naturally we are all like supposed to be, we're not supposed, we're all close and then we do life together. And, you know, once once somebody's doing something, you know, you're there for the, if I would talk every day and we've been friends for seven years now, right? And every, imagine having WhatsApp group, having to talk every single day. Um, so it's been amazing, you know, we have like, prayer time, Bible study, and then just life, bands, right? If I, there are days where, before I post anything on Instagram, I post it on the group, it already hypes me, such that, <laughs> you people, when I even post on Instagram, if you don't hype me, mm, I already have hyping already, you know? Um, the days where, you know, I'm venting, somebody has upset me, and I know that if I tell my husband, my husband just say, oh, sorry, but I know that if I tell my sisters, ha, they will finish the person, and, you know, in a, in a godly way, <laughs> and, you know, and, you know, uh, and it just makes me feel better that, you know, I have people that, there's no way that I would go into that group with a burden, and, you know, there's some things that you, you can share with your husband, but he might not understand because he's not of this same gender with you, and then you discuss with your sisters, and so it's just been um, amazing, so again, I have, like, that group, and then, in that group we then i have like a smaller one like we're just three of us um and we are doing life together right and so we advise one another we inspire one another you know we push one another right um so one person will do something that uh, you two of us we're, we're not even thinking about it we're like ah how did you even like wow that's so audacious that's so bold and then another person is doing something else so we all just mm. are just you know inspiring mm. one another um so that's how you know we just found one another again intentionality is key i always say so just the way you don't make a mistake or you shouldn't make a mistake in choosing a life partner i feel like you sh also shouldn't make a mistake in choosing your friends because they are also doing life with you mm. and they can make or mar you mm. so you know, companies would go the length to choose the right fit for them, right? They will hire rights, so you know, so I feel like when you're choosing your friends, you should choose rights as well. Like, you know, it's 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 life like it like your life literally depends on it. So you can't just um choose That's any amazing. Mm -hmm. But you know like the streets are wild. <laughs> you can, how do you, the, you know, practice? I feel like, I feel like, I feel like, aside, from, aside from the, mm -hmm. aside from this, my core and my sisterhood group, you know, I also have like other relationships, right? And practical ways, most times I develop these friendships, maybe we've gone to the same conference, you know, you're my sick partner. And so sometimes it might be, you realize that if you're going in the direction, other people that are going in the same direction, it will be easy for you to attract. I mean, imagine, I'm, I'm in Lekki now. If I'm going to Ikeja, right, from Lekki here, and I enter a bus, it will not make sense for me to enter a bus that is going to Aja. Because people that are going to, I'm not going to Aja. If I want to go to Ikeja and I enter Aja bus, obviously I'm already in the wrong boss and with the wrong set of people so same thing right um if you're going heading in the right direction there'll be things there'll be places that you will go to there'll be meetings that you would attend there will be you know things like that and then you can actually find because those ones who are also looking for 
almost similar things that mm. you're looking for. For me, that's a practical way. I've met amazing people um, by that, yes. So I think it's also a thing of being open-minded. Being open. Because Another thing, you can also slide in somebody's DM. Right. Like, yeah, it's not only for relation, boyfriend, girlfriend, relationship. Or some, and also, I think that it also depends. <sighs> How do I say this now? It also, it also depends. I've actually wanted to be friends with somebody and God told me it was in time. Mm. I know that it might also sound very spiritual. Like, it's not just friendship. But then I've had that, um, that I did not eventually become friends with that person until nine years after. Mm. Can you imagine? Wow. Nine years after. Can you wow. even just imagine? So at the time, you know, I wanted to be friends with the person. The person seemed like, you know, ticked all the boxes that I, you know. I, because again, how do you choose friends, right? Uh, first of all, knowing what your values are. So that when you see someone that has similar values mm -hmm. and aligns, you know, you can connect, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so this person, I'd seen her, you know, she felt, it felt like she's ticked all the boxes. And God said no. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, no problem. If you say no, no, well, we move, right? And then obviously, like, I was seeing her, you know, but I was just like, yeah, I'm supposed to be your friend, <laughs> but <laughs> I can't be yet. So you don't know this. It's very soon. <laughs> and nine years after, Right, um, where I was at a speaking engagement, she was also a speaker. I was a speaker, you know, and I want to believe that I spoke, like, you know, beautifully well. And you know, after after the event, you know, she walked up to me and said, "Oh wow, like really nice. Like, can I have your number?" I was like, mm, "Yeah, you can." <laughs> Even though I've been wanting this for like nine years, uh, and then we just became friends. And you know, interestingly, like I think a few months after. Another of our, our own mutual friends, which I didn't know at the time, you know, called me one day. I said, you know what, Renny, I feel like, you know, we should have like a prayer group and all that. And I decided, okay, no problem. So we became even prayer partners as well, right? Um, and then later on, I realized that there were some things that she was dealing with during that period. Like things that I obviously cannot mention. And then, you know, God then takes me back to say that, if I had, if you had become her friend at the time, you might have picked up some of the vices. You might have picked up. I know how it is sometimes. Someone might be doing something bad, and the person would find Jesus, and the person will find you that you picked. You that you it was you that you know mm -hmm. you went to. You might not come out of it. Mm -hmm. You understand? Like yeah. so, it's just so beautiful having to be directed and be you know guided yeah. by the leading of the spirit because in every like I said in everything. Everything is spiritual, yeah. right? Everything yeah. Yeah, is spiritual. So, yeah. Yes, everything is spiritual. You can't leave God out of it and mm -hmm. say, ah, mm -mm. Mm -mm. mentally, let me just handle it by mm -hmm. myself. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> it's not possible. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we're about to round up. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to ask, um, as a creative, mm -hmm. why is it important for you? I mean, you design spaces, yes, you've yes. had lots of huge, mm -hmm. amazing projects. Mm -hmm. What role has God played in those mm -hmm. projects in the process of creating? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, so it's interesting, right? I think that for about say, and this is me just very being very honest. I think for like the first say four or five years, I relied solely on the Holy Spirit. In fact, there will be times where we have a project and it will take maybe it's supposed to take us like eight weeks. The first five weeks, like. I'm still bland, like I don't even know the direction in which we are going to, and I'm just like, God, please just help us, right? It might be just the last two weeks, and then inspiration comes, and then it would just be a game changer. Not until, like, I think maybe when I'd been in business for like five, six years, I'd like, ah, yeah, now you know, I can read books, I can do, I, you know, I can be inspired by nature, I can be inspired by travel, yeah. Now let me start doing by myself. Ha, I flopped, right? And then one day I was driving into the filling station and then God told me that, you think that you can do the thing by yourself, Abby? Okay, let's see how immediately, like, this was something that I was even happy. I just started shedding tears, like, oh my goodness, right? Like, that is actually true. I've been trying to do this on my own, right? And obviously, like, it cannot be as when you're um, being guided. I, I say that, 
Mm-hmm. I said that, you know, that just means that I'm a boy. I'm a boy <laughs> that will go. He would find out what is in your heart and then come and tell me, right? So because there are times where even though we would, when we go for consultation and we ask the client, what do you want? Sometimes they don't even, in fact, 80%, 90% of the time, they don't know what they want. And they are thinking, that, ah, am I in this person's mind now? Will I know what this person wants? But then you will now, the project comes up. Like, guys, oh my goodness, that's so true. Like, this is so me. This is so... I said, mm, yeah, <laughs> don't worry. The Holy Spirit went into you, downloaded what you wanted, and then gave us the blueprints, and then we worked, you know. So for me, that's how, you know, um, my business has been, you know, solely, also, unless of the times that I've tried to <laughs> do it your own. Well. <laughs> well, you know, the Holy Spirit has been. And because, again, if you look at it, like, that's what then makes you stand out. Yeah. Right, because we are not following the crowd. If you have to, if you are relying on the Holy Spirit, like then this is, and also, um, you know, God, God, God is is a designer, right? He designed all of us. He designed the whole world. You know, he literally is a designer. So having to be mentored by God is, you know, is absolutely, absolutely. Um, you spoke mm-hmm. about like downloading blueprints. Mm-hmm. I like all those um, words because mm. it really helps to conceptualize mm. the whole thing. Mm. So, um, how does it happen? Is it that maybe you could be, you just tell the Holy Spirit, like, Holy Spirit, like, how do we go about this? And you're thinking, and it just drops ideas in your mind. Or how, how, do, how do these ideas come? So, most times for me, it actually even happens in my sleep. Wow. Yeah. So, I will, it will almost, like, when I wake up, I literally feel like, it was as real as that, right? And then I realized that, oh, I was actually, it hasn't that happened so many times that now it's already like this, right? Or there'll be times where I'm just seated and I'm just even talking with you and then the idea drops in my head. Yeah. So I, you see a vivid picture in yes, your dream? Yes, yes. Something I've never seen before. And then I wake up and then something it might even be instructions right um i'm hearing you know exactly what to do um so yeah wow i know that's why i told you that for the like first four years that's how i was living until i said that i wanted to be a boss by myself <laughs> <laughs> and that's why i said that when god then told me that oh so you want to do this yourself i was really crying because i know where i was coming from like i know how much help I had gotten, and so I was already now forming James Bond. Oh, I can do this by myself, and and I think prior to that encounter, I had like some before I you know I used to be doing I used to have mistakes and stuff like that. But then prior to that, I began. To, but then I would just say, oh, you know, it's just like norm, it's normal, it's normal, it's normal, it's normal, and then. It's just like, oh, wow, you know, you can actually do these things without um, having mistakes, right? Um, yeah, there's the technical part. I mean, like, I'm currently, you know, enrolled in an interior design school, but for a long, for many years, I, I, I like, I do not have any um, technical knowledge, right? Except for the fact that I schooled myself, you know, YouTube, so many things, right? Um, every other thing obviously has to be, if, if, if our business is standing out, um, as one of the leading interior design companies, right, then that means there's, there's a secret, and my own secret I've just told you. <laughs> I've just told you Your now. So, yeah. Exactly. Well, it's really <laughs> on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I know, no problem. I want more, more people to join um, and experience um, that, that yeah. secret. Yeah. So, I like the fact that you also pointed out that it's not just that, you know, you go and pray, 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 mm. or oh, that, that God gives you these mm. ideas. Mm. Mm. You also need to develop your own skills as of well. Course, of That's course, of course. Because God is an excellent God. You cannot go and disappoint him or, you know. I mean, like, and I, 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 I'm sorry to say this, like, so sometimes, like, Christians do that a lot, where, you know, just say, ah, God is going to help me, and then they don't own their skills, they're not excellent at what they do. I don't like to use this example, but let me just use it. <laughs> I mean, like, every year, my company, for artisans, right, we have lots of artisans and so we always choose like the top three right i mean like this year the person that won the first position is a muslim right and i have another artisan that this particular artisan is a christian right like christian christian but then i realized that anytime we give him work for the first five days 
his phone will be switched off. Mm. By the time you now call him, he said he went to the mountain. Mm. I'm like, mountain for what now? Oh, God, do your work. I cannot be telling my client that, oh, so sorry, we are so sorry about this, but this particular person is currently on the mountain. He can't come down yet. I'm, I'm my, client, my client is like, you do you understand? Like, so sometimes, you know, we, and I feel like we mask mediocrity in that. Mm. We mask mediocrity because there are some principles in life, whether you are Christian, you are Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, the principles are there, right? So I don't always just say that if those principles are there, then as a Christian, right, if I now apply my own kingdom principles mm -hmm. with the principle that God has, whether rain falls, sun shines, some things will happen, mm -hmm. then I should actually be at a more advantage. Hmm. I'm not speaking wrong English, but I should be <laughs> more advantage. Yeah, exactly. You see, you don't know <laughs> English. You should be at, I should be at, at an advantage than the other person. Right, and so that's how I actually say. So for me, I would always say, you know, um, competence. That one is even non-negotiable. I actually have to be competent to what I do, and then the God factor mm -hmm. should just, you know, make all the difference. I mean, like if, for example, God places five. Yeah, maybe you're a non, you're, you're an unbeliever, and your talent is five, and I am a believer. My talent is five as well. With your five. You can actually do excellently well, right? But then God just then says, oh, you know what? As my child of God, and with the grace that I'm going to put upon you, you know, I will multiply yours by 10 or by 1,000. Even if my own talent may be like four, you know, that already, you know, yeah. makes me way ahead of, um, ahead of you. But God actually needs to have something mm -hmm. to work with. Mm -hmm. Most times, people don't have anything. Yeah. For God to work with. So imagine God now has one thousand, wants to multiply with what you, and you have zero. Obviously, one thousand times zero is zero, right? Do you see? And so that's why if you look at the parable of the talents as well, right? Um, the master wasn't happy with the one that went to bury. Because from that one, if he had multiplied it, it become two, from that two it becomes four, from that four it becomes eight, from eight it becomes sixteen. And then most times these things are not even compounding. They're not even um this um is usually compound compounding yeah. interest so that your four might not even be eight. eight it might be like 64 and then from there it can be 100 and something you know just but just basically starting from something that's what god you know says that he, he um um he respects your humble like the humble beginnings right mm -hmm. do not take it for granted yeah. as well because you know it's from that little you know you know the story of the mustard seed it's like if you see it's, if, it's, if you put mustard seed there you most likely will not see it. but then it grows to be like a um giant tree so that's how you know um i see these things and i i respect everything um that is put in my hands um, and i know you know because god has said that um, everything works together for good and he will bless the works of my hands mm -hmm. So what is interior design? Oh, I decide that I want to do fashion. No, oh, I decide I want to do I don't know whatever it is. I genuinely believe that whatever I've told God that I want to do, He would bless yeah. the works of my hands. So some days, sometimes some people say, ah, "How do you know what to do?" You know, obviously, like there's the whole passion, and you know, listen, to, you know, listen to what God has you to do or what you know you've gone to school for. But I genuinely just believe that whatever it is that. Yeah. I find myself doing um, it would prosper. Yeah, I think that's amazing. Like I remember when Papa Bishop Oedipo used to say that God is the constant, mm -hmm. you are the variable. Exactly. So God mm -hmm. is like e X one billion, mm -hmm. and then your own is whatever yes. you, yeah, put, whatever into you put into it. it. If you yes. put two, exactly, that's, that's it. It was going to be multiplied exactly. by. Exactly. And also the fact that God cannot bless something that is like. If you don't operate by heaven's principles, you are not diligent, you know, you are not... That, is that even fair? <laughs> not fair God now. cannot just say, oh, because you are praying 24 mm -hmm. hours in a day, okay. it's going to... You also have to put in the work. Put in your work as yeah. well. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, um, just one question. So, mm -hmm. obviously, I know that social media is very important to mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. As believers, mm -hmm. should we be... Um, first of all, why is, it, why is that influence? Mm -hmm. Having that influence over mm -hmm. thousands of people mm -hmm. that you may not even know, you yeah. never meet. Yeah. Why is it important? Mm -hmm. And as believers, should we seek or, you know, work towards, because now it's pretty much a job mm -hmm. being an influencer mm -hmm. online. Mm -hmm. So yes, how, how should Christians approach it? Why is it important? Mm -hmm. And, you know, <laughs> I mean, like, you know, for us to shine our lights, 
we need like that um we need we need that so for me again it depends on what your why is right so for me my, for me my social media why is um influence Sorry and to call you short. did you create that why before like you intentionally sat down and was like this is why i'm doing this yes okay that's inspiring. yes yes because for the times where i'm tired and i'm just like i don't want to do this. my why when i remember my why you know i i I jump back up and then and I and then I continue and so and, and that's why I see that if you look at some of the celebrities today that have like 10, 10 million followers, fifty million followers, and are not Christians, it pains my heart because I'm just like that's so much influence and you know um, you know Jesus said I would do even greater works um, than him, but then sometimes we don't even believe that we can do greater works, and I feel like we are in such an age that we have so many tools and so many things that we can actually 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 do um to have greater works imagine when you know jesus was going from city to city you know riding donkey and all of that there was no social media at the time i mean he could be preaching you know to the multitude to thousands of people in he could be preaching to thousands of people and still be broadcasting but at the time they didn't have such mm -hmm. technology you know that even so many people could yeah, even stream, stream live. live and all of that so there's just so much like if we understand again the why so for me it's just um getting people inspired and you know um drawing people to jesus that's my why so the so i use different different content and I, because i'm a very busy person i also understand that it might be difficult for me to keep up and so I batch my content, for mm -hmm. example. Again, because I understand my why, and I said earlier that when there is a will, there will always be a way. So sometimes I will sit down, maybe I'll just take like six hours off of my schedule, or I might take the entire day and plan my content strategy for the next. Sometimes it might be a month, but I realized that a month is now too small for me. So I can actually do like six months strategy. Mm -hmm. And so I can act, literally shoot all my content in a day for the next six months. Um, have like a, I have a calendar, right? And I also have like an app that helps me. So sometimes when people are commenting on my page, on my post that day, you feel like I just shot it that day. But you see another secret now <laughs> that is out. <laughs> um, I've done it maybe like three months or four months yeah. ago. And sometimes I'm in meetings. I just pick up my phone and I'm seeing notification of like, what's happening? And I realized that my app has posted for me right so i would put it i'll schedule it like oh because i know my for example one of my engagement times 9 a.m in the morning so you're it's already there so i've scheduled it for 9 a.m and when i scheduled that post say three months ago 9 a.m and then it posts automatically and so comments are coming so when i'm in the meeting like i was up and i realized that oh my app has already posted for me so these are like easy ways you know strategies and stuff like and with every area of your life you actually have to be strategic you actually have to plan and understand what you're doing and so that you can have with and then sometimes it might not only just be me people give me ideas because you understand where i'm going to and so i'm like oh they're like oh you know what i thought about this idea for you you know i think that it might be useful like, oh thank you so much and that's another thing like right once you have like a goal you know you should also be able to share your vision with others so that they can also you know help you and then also um, hold you um, accountable so i hope that's been... is a tool yes definitely is a tool. tool as in big tool mm -hmm. because where we are going to right um I, I don't want to hide my light under a bushel. Mm. Yeah, so. yeah, and this this show is shining light. Yes, exactly. It's so. shining light. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know where I don't know who will see this interview. Now, whether it's Obama or whether it's um, you know, I don't know. Please help my destiny. Yeah. Thank you so much for Thank you. Thank you again for having me. Thank you.